Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Training Tuesday, the Tribe of Athletes. I'm David and today I am here with my girlfriend Pestare. Hello. <laughs> she, she is a pro MMA fighter and we thought for today, because the Training Tuesday is designed to, you know, get your foot into mindset training because we think, or I think, I think she knows now that she also thinks it's so, so, so important because everything starts in the mind. And the Training Tuesdays is designed for athletes, for mostly professional athletes, to get your foot in the door and to learn to study the mind. Because like, look, I've studied this topic for the last three years and it's not just my knowledge, it's also the knowledge of people before me that have done nothing but study the most successful athletes, most successful business people, most successful artists on the, in this world, and they're, they're finding patterns. And these patterns, you know, they wrote books about it, they're doing seminars, they're doing coaching, and all these, so that knowledge is not, it's not my knowledge, and that's why I feel really good about, like, being just very confident about, about it, because we have both already experienced the power of it and it's absolutely incredible and you just look at all these like great athletes like they all had a dream and they didn't just have a dream once a month they nurtured that dream every single day and that showed in their mindset and in, in, in sports we call it mindset and it, it's a beautiful thing and I think so for today we have prepared something a bit special because we thought okay because this is for people I want to put the foot in the door it's like okay what are the most common questions that I get when I coach um, athletes privately and also just like on social media uh, on email and so on and Bestare she's been you know doing the stuff that I do for like the last two or three months right yeah right. and uh, yeah so I guess she's still really knows you know what questions that she had and so i wanted her to to ask me the questions and um yeah that's what she's gonna do yeah. ready let's start you make sure you hear it. so <laughs> um david can you talk about how to deal with pressure during competition because i think all athletes experience this yeah so have i <laughs> i think we, we all we all do right and i mean here's the thing we we talked about this today as well. It's like you have to like practice this. You can't just expect to like read an article or listen to a podcast or, or you know, read a book and then know how to deal with pressure. Like it's, it's a process and all the, the failures, all the hard stuff that is thrown at you it's, it depends on, you know, how, how you use them. And pressure is, you know, it's self-doubt. It's when we're doubting ourselves. And for example, with tennis players, I can see in a second, even though I'm not like, you know, I'm not an ex-tennis player, I was a swimmer, but I can tell in a second because I look at the body language and I can see they're doubting, they're hesitating, right? And so the pressure, I mean, it's something that all athletes experience in some form or another. And it just, you know, it's you really deserve to be at your best in the competition because let's be honest, like you put in all the hours, you know, like sweat and tears and training, right? You eat well, you try to get a lot of sleep, you make the social sacrifices. So then it's really, and especially in fighting, uh, you go in and oh, it can be over so, so, so fast, right? There's other sports like tennis where you can lose 49.5% of the balls and you can still win the match. So you have a lot, lots of opportunities to, to like, toughen up and to learn to deal with those, those situations. But in MMA, for example, you get punched with it in the face and it's like, it's all over. And that's like one of the least satisfying um, feelings if, if you train all this and you can't show, you can't show it. So that's why it's, it's uh, probably the most important question. But like with everything else in life, just think about it. Everything that you have mastered and, and as an athlete, you will know that this is true. Everything you master through repetition. Like, like, just think, like everything you learn through repetition. And for some reason, like we tend to think that when it comes to the mind, to the mental game, that it's like a different game. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I've, I've read this, I see people do that, and now I know how to do it. And then you go into the competition and you wonder why it's not working. Well, it's because the mental game, it's really, it's just another game. It's like if you're learning basketball, you're learning all these dribble moves, you're learning how to shoot. It's like the physical game, but then there's the mental 
game. And the question that I always ask is to athletes, you know, how much of your performance do you think is mental? And they'll give me like 80%, 90%, all the way up to 95%. And we hear that and we know it's, it's true. But then the next question I ask is, so what do you do every single day? Because I know you spend two hours in the gym. It's like, what do you do every single day to study the mind, to work on your mental game, to develop the mental game? And then usually there's a long pause. <laughs> there's a long pause yeah and there's and 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 that's the thing so I, what i what i can say is like if you want to learn how to deal with pressure and i'm saying dealing with pressure because it's not like you can't get rid of it it's going to come again and again you look at the most successful artists even they when they go in front of thousands of people they have like the jitters again and you even said today you're performing sometimes the best when you're nervous so it's a good thing to have these but it's Similar with high pressure situations in life, they're just going to come again and again and again. So it's important that we learn to, to deal with it and to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. That's really what it is. And that takes, that takes practice. And so the tip is that there is no quick fix. And everybody that is telling you there's a quick fix is full of shit. Because <laughs> if you're, I mean, you, you know, if you're just, you know, accepting a fight and you didn't train and somebody's telling you, you know, watch this YouTube video, and it's not going to work. Man, if you're trying to l learn how to swim, you can watch all the Michael Phelps videos that you want. You watch them a thousand times. It doesn't matter. You go in the pool and, you know, you're just still going to sink. So, you know, knowledge is one thing, but then you just have to do You have to make a commitment to get good at this. And if you are honest with yourself and also you, and it's really cool to see that, that you are, it's like, okay, mental side is really important. And so I'm just going to take time and focus and, and invest in developing the mental side of things, right? And... And it's not just that you're going to be the best version of yourself. It's also that you're going to, you can have like so much more fun at doing things because the mindset is not just for sports. Because if you figure out how to do it in sports, you can, right? Much, yeah. You can and use it in, in other areas of life and so on. So I think, um, yeah, that would be my most important thing is to just make a, com make a decision to get better at this. Study the mind, study the mind, learn how it works because it's the stuff that you were not taught in school. Not, I mean, at least I wasn't, you weren't, and no. <laughs> I know a lot of you weren't, <laughs> so, like that, yeah. yeah. Good, we go. Yeah, the next sure. Question. Thank you. Uh, sometimes when you ask someone what they really want, they don't even know. So how can we get to the point that we know what we really want? Yeah, so that, I mean, that question, it, I'm all about having a big dream. And if you look at, again, you look at the successful athletes, they all have a big dream and a huge dream. And you know how they say, if your dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. Mm -hmm. So, so we got to have a dream. And here's the thing, like most, a lot of athletes, they don't know because they probably, you probably haven't taken the time to really think about it. Like when's the last time? Well, for you, I, I kind of know, but before you started working with it, when, I guess I can ask you a question now, right? When was the last time that you just sat down and wrote down what you really want? Never before. Never before? No. See? And, I, and you're like a top athlete, right? I was an Olympic athlete and I never did that. Yeah. Like nobody ever like, nobody ever told me yeah. to do it, yeah. right? And that we know a lot of athletes that also, they're great athletes. They, do, they, they work like so many hours and they're like legit good, have all the talent. But they don't even know what they want. In, and, and that's the thing. Like this goes into how the laws of the universe work. Is like, and again, that is not being taught in school. But basically, if you, to make it really simple, if you can hold a picture in your mind of what you really want, and if you hang out with that picture a lot, you, as a human being, you have the skills, the capabilities to create that in the 3D world. So first, it's just a thought. Then it becomes a goal and you nurture it and you tune into that again and again and you really become clear on what you want and then you can manifest that with time. So when we look at Michael Jordan and, you know, I mean, I, there's a good documentary on Netflix, the, the, what's it called, The Last Dance and, and others about Michael Jordan. You just, you know, that guy, I mean, he started from, from nothing and then worked his way all the way up and he always had the dream. He always knew what he wanted. And the same with Kobe Bryant, the same with Michael Phelps. They knew what they wanted. And I tell you, like my story was when I was swimming, I didn't know what I wanted. That's the first thing. And then my goals were always along the lines of 
what's realistic for me make swiss champs okay then next year okay win swiss champs okay cool made that then okay i can make it to the european level and then i did that then i can make it to the world level i did that and then my coach said okay you know your times are really close to the olympic that you can make it to the olympic i'm like sure why not right but it wasn't like a dream of mine it was a, that dream was like squashed when i was little when they told me you know go to school and and, and all that, forget about the Olympic gold. So I forgot about it. And I think that's, that's what it is for most athletes. It's like, they don't, they don't even allow themselves to really think what they want. Because we are so, at least where I grew up in Switzerland, we are so conditioned into being like, being always satisfied with what we had, feeling lucky because others have less and, and so on. And so you don't even permit yourself to dream big and and I think you know there, there's one quote that I really love is always be grateful but never be satisfied mm -hmm. always be grateful but never be satisfied because God the creator whatever wants you to have the best life because then we spoke about this today it's so beautiful if you're the best version of yourself guess what if you make more money if you're famous you can inspire thousands if not millions of other people you're going to make the lives of everybody around you better if you have a big dream and it's so magnetic why do we why do we feel attracted to leaders because they have a vision and we feel attracted to them because they it's magnetic it's just magnetic and and so what I would say is to become clear is, hey, just close your eyes and close your eyes and use your imagination. And if your imagination is not very good in the beginning, which mine wasn't because I haven't used it in fucking 20 years, you know, use it as a, as a small kid a bit, right? But then they tell you in school, pay attention, don't do that, don't look there, do, do math, do this and that. So we kind of forget about it. But when you look at like literally like let's do this and i was saying earlier that we human beings have the skills that animals don't have to create and like a thing out of an idea right and that's the same is like look at this so this this cup first existed in somebody's mind and now human beings we created this so it's it's here right this chair a little our little studio that we set up <laughs> with her idea um the little studio, like this chair, first existed in somebody's mind and now it's here. The phone that we're using existed in somebody's mind and now it's here. Right? And with Michael Jordan, it first, the NBA rings and all that, it first being the best ever, existed in his mind and then he created that. And so what we have to do is we, we just have to close our eyes use our imagination and just drop all the oh i can't do this i can't do that because of this and that just drop it everything and and think what you really want and don't sell yourself short you know you i'm not saying you have to go out like muhammad ali he went out i'm the best ever i'm gonna knock you out and like cocky all that because it's not everybody's style right mcgregor is doing that well and and but you see what he's doing like he's very famous but there's a lot of power in just permitting yourself to like dream big and start to think, what do I really want? And then just imagine it and start writing it down, right? right start writing it down. And, and, you know, if you're, you know, I was talking to my best friend, uh, if, he, if he sees it, shout out to Kili, but you know, like if he's, if he, I'm just making the number up now, but if he's making 200K a year, and then, yeah, my goal would be to make 250, you know, and that's not a goal, that's not a dream. That's like an incremental step. And it's like, it's so realistic for him and he already knows how to do that. I can tell him how to do that, right? So think about something, your dream has to scare the shit out of you and has to scare and excite you at the same time. And then you know you're on the right track. And then you want to write that down and you want to start to nurture that thought more and more because that's how you create. And when you do that, the magic will start to happen because, you know, it takes a bit of time for the universe to arrange itself for you. But that's how the laws are going to work. And, and that's why we want to, we're in for the long term, right? We, want, we don't want to think, okay, I tried something once and then it didn't work. We got to give it a bit of time. And, but the universe will work for you and it's, it's a law. It's, 
the, um, oh man, I'm not going to do it with this one now, but can I borrow this for a second? It's the same with like the gravity. Like if I believe in gravity or not, if she believes it or not, it doesn't matter. If I let that go, it's gone, right? And it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. And it's the, it's exactly, yeah, that's fine. It's exactly the same with, it's exactly the same with uh, the laws of the universe. You know, they work no matter what. And it's best to be in harmony with them. And really the one thing that separates us from the animal kingdom is that we can create our own environment. Animals can't do that. Did you ever see a dog that created, created something out of, no, he didn't, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I would want to meet that dog, I tell you that. <laughs> so if you have a dog or something, a cat at home that does that, please let us know. I'll be, I definitely want to connect it. But yeah, so I hope that, hope that answers um, the question, hi. Mm -hmm. To just start hanging out with that dream, hey. start writing it down, start to nurture it and it will become clearer and clearer in the imagination. You know, when we visualize our things, like there's all of a sudden for me, there's more color. Mm -hmm. I see more detail. I see the haircut that I have and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So dream big. Dream big, yeah. And um, you said before something about imagination. Imagination. Mm. Yesterday you showed me one of your students' progress. Mm -hmm. Signs his work with you. Can you explain first what he told you and then how it came to it? Yeah, you're so cute when you read that. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Uh, she's doing a great <laughs> job, isn't she? Um, yeah, of course. So that was a tennis player and he was visualizing how his match was going to go. And, and, and he, yeah, he visualized how his match was going to go and he did that for a week or two. And then it just went exactly as he visualized. He's like, David, that's so crazy. You know, it worked. And they actually, they won the team match. So I believe he's um, playing in America. They won against the university that I haven't won since 1999, yeah. which, was, well, which was pretty cool. And I think he was like one of those deciding, you know, players in America. You always have, you play university against university. Mm -hmm. So you don't really play for yourself. And... Yeah, he, so he, he won that final match that, you know, for the, for the university. And I think, yeah, with the visualizations, I mean, it's so freaking powerful. It's, it's so freaking powerful. That stuff works. And I guess it would be a good time to quote the basketball study because that was done in a controlled, like, you know, don't take my word for it. Don't take um, the tennis player's word for it. But there's a, there was a controlled study that was done in 1989. And what they did is they took basketball players and they divided them into three groups, okay? Three groups. One group, they didn't practice at all for six weeks. Then the second group, they practiced on the court, just the free throws, just so from the penalty line, from the foul line, and just the, just the throwing for six weeks, one hour a day. And then the third group, they didn't go to the court, but they practiced at home for 30 minutes only in their mind. So they were shooting the hoops for 30 minutes in their mind at home. And after six weeks, they got the guys together and, you know, they had them shoot and they measured and they looked at the averages who improved the most. And obviously the guys that didn't train at all, they did worst of all, right? So they, they, they did worst. But then the interesting thing is that those guys that only visualize at home for half the time that the guys that spend the time on the court, they perform better than the guys on the court. And so, and, and so you could, I guess you can already expect that when we're speaking about visualization and bringing up that, that study. But the, I think the more important question is why did the guys who stayed at home didn't touch, didn't touch the court and only practice for 30 minutes instead of an hour. Why did they be, why were they better than the guys that actually spent time on the court? That is the interesting question. And when you think about it, it's like if you were at home practicing in your mind, just shooting the three throws, how would you, how would you visualize it? With the details. With the details and every ball would hit yeah. hit the hit the net oh, right course. every ball would be in mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and that's the thing like if you visualize the perfect execution you make that shot thousands and thousands of times in your mind and it always went in and by the time you get there and they measure you you feel so comfortable you feel so at ease because you've experienced it in your mind so many times 
that you're totally confident. Whereas when you're on the court and you're making it and it doesn't go in, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah I missed it. it. It's not getting better from last, you know, and you start to worry about it. And, and, and that's, yeah, so visualizations are so powerful. And the reason why they work is because there is, and by the way, I, if you like this, what we're speaking about here, go back to the training Tuesday that I did last week. I, it's called why you cannot afford to not study the mind. And I give you all the reasons. Oh no, there's another one on the three things. Every athlete needs to know. That's a short one. I'll, I'll, I'll link it. The three things every athlete needs to know about the subconscious mind. And one of them is that the subconscious mind, and that's where all your stuff that you have mastered is sitting in the subconscious mind because you mastered it through repetition. It cannot differentiate between what is a real experience on the court and an, and an experience that is imagined in your mind. Right? It cannot, for, for the subconscious mind, it's the same thing. So that's how you can explain that the people on the court, you know, they experienced it, but it wasn't perfect. And the guys that were, were doing it at home in the mind, they just did it again and again and again. And for the subconscious mind, it's the same thing. And there's lots of other studies that you told me, for example, that you can grow your muscles more if you think about like grow, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Like there's, and, and there's all kinds of these studies that it's just absolutely crazy. I mean, yeah, it's just really, really crazy. And that's why I encourage each and every one of you, if you find this interesting to invest time and and start to start to study it there's so much to learn and the, the growth curve is bah, you know it is it can be so steep and so fulfilling to learn about these things and so yeah visualization yeah that was cool that was nice to get the message as well so that they got the win and win and yeah. Lo love when it works out you know we have so, one more yes Go. one more <laughs> When we suffer an injury, yeah. what tips can you get? Yeah, us? yeah. Mm -hmm. Injuries are a tough one, and I, I have to say, for for me as a swimmer, ex swimmer, it was a. I guess we never had these high impact injuries that a lot of other sports that you have in other sports, right? Because in swimming, if something comes, it's like your shoulder is sore, and you can start to do therapy, and it's like a slow, usually a slow injury. Whereas in other sports, you have like these high impact injuries. So, you know. Most of them, I guess, you cannot avoid because they, I mean, it's not like you go and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to get hurt today, right? So they, shit happens. But then again, it's like how you react to the situations. And what I, so when we have athletes that get injured in the tribe of athletes, I usually have them watch in the beginning, have them watch one of those documentaries about really world class world-class athletes. For example, you told me one about Tony Parker today, about yeah, yeah. injuries, right? That was inspiring. There's there's the, the Mamba mentality, Kobe Bryant. Like there, there's a lot of those, but basically you see that they happen to the best athletes in the world. Like, you know, it's part of the game. It's really part of the game. And what I would say is, okay, it depends on how you react to it. She told me, Tony Parker, he was every little, like every millimeter that the movement, the range of movement came back, he was happy about. So he focused on what's going well. He's, so you have to, you know, you have to understand that where, where focus goes, energy flows. This is Tony Robbins. So what you focus on, you're going to create. So if you focus on the shit, guess what? You're going to get more shit. If you focus on the good, you're going to create more good. It's as simple as that. Like these things, like this mindset stuff is not difficult. It is, it's really not difficult. It's just that people don't know how it works because we're not taught in school. Why aren't we taught in school? Because the teachers don't know. And so with injuries, I actually think it's probably the best time to get into mindset, to start to take time. Because you, 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 okay, you're gonna spend a lot of time in rehab, but then you don't have, you don't have the physical practice that you had, but Maybe you have a bit more time, but think about visualizations. I heard from billiard players. I have a friend, Fran, he, he could, because of COVID, he couldn't go and train. He was saying he visualized his shots for hours. So instead of going for four hours, this, he was doing two hours of visualization. And he said after months, he came back and it was as if nothing happened, even better. So like, why not use the time to 
start to get into the mindset, start to see like what the mental side of things can do for you, how powerful your mind is. Because again, that's what separates us from animals. Our five senses aren't so sharp compared to animals because there's animals that hear better, see better. They're very, very sharp. Our five senses are, you know, they're okay, but they're not like if I drop you off on a dangerous island, your chances of survival, especially you, <laughs> yeah, well, no, mine either. The, right they're not so good but with an animal they feel it at home but we have these higher faculties those you have things like willpower where we can focus on one thing for hours if we really want to just got to learn how to do it we have imagination which is basically we can look into the future if we do it right it's absolutely amazing what we can do if, if we have intuition we can read other people's energy i can sometimes tell her thought and, and let me tell you i used to be in banking and completely into a different subject, not like I, I knew nothing about this. And when people would tell me, oh, I can read your energy, I was like, you're full of shit. That doesn't work, that doesn't exist. And now I can do it. I, I see people in the body language, I feel it. I don't, you know, it's just one of those things that, or memory, take memory. We all, did you know we have a perfect memory? It's just that it's very weak. We never use it. We never use it. But there's people that memorize things. If they love memorizing, they memorize all kinds of things. And when you put people in a hypnosis, they, you know, all of a sudden they remember all these things because it's there. It's just the memory is weak. And that's the same thing with the willpower. It's weak because we get distracted by social media. We do this and I, you know, me too. But it's like we can develop these things. And that's what, what this, like this human experience. Wow, we... Like, yeah, so it's a good time to, to get into it, to start, to start seeing what there is because, yeah, I, I just can't think of anything that's more fulfilling than that because as an athlete, and I guess we can, is there more questions or was that it? No, that was. That was it? Yeah. I think we have a privilege and a wonderful opportunity to practice mindset, to try new things and see what happens with it and we can use sport to like basically a playing field where we can have fun we can we can develop all these skills we can develop the mental game we can develop the mindset we can you know it's just so beautiful because there's no life and death i mean okay fighting is pretty is pretty fucking serious but in the end of the day you know you hug it's not about you don't want to really well i guess you could want to kill the person for a little bit but when it's over it's over so it's it's still a game. It's a, it's a, it's a sport. Mm -hmm. And if you can learn about these things, if you can learn how it works, you can transfer those skills into all areas of your life. Because they, mindset is universal. Why do you think they're saying, why, why do you think athletes are so, so popular with corporations? Because they know they know how to hustle. They, they already learned a lot of skills in, while they were in sports, and the people know that. But often we are what we call an unconscious competent, that we do something well, but we don't know why. And so you want to become a conscious competent. You want to know why you're good at something, and you always, you got to know one thing. It doesn't matter how good you are, you can always be better. And that is the truth. I don't, I don't care who you are. And I'm, I, I wouldn't never have an argument with that because I just know it to be true. Nobody knows what your potential is. Nobody knows what my potential is. Nobody knows what your potential is because it's infinite. Nobody can tell you. And if there's something telling somebody telling you, you know, they, they, they can't unless they're God or something. But, you know, they, they can't tell you. And so, like, we have this beautiful opportunity to, to explore and to push ourselves and, and find out. And the mental game is part of that because once you wrap your head around how powerful this stuff is, it's like, you know, th there, there is no limit to it. And I think like a beautiful thing is that you can, you can then repeat it in all areas of your life because it is universal because the laws are the same everywhere. If you want to be a creator in sports, if you want to be a creator in business, if you want to be a creator as a mom, if you, you know, like it's, it's you can be, you know, create a beautiful family. I mean, that's creation. And yeah, I just, yeah, I mean, this is really beautiful, I think.
because it's everywhere. And then the other thing is, and that is just as beautiful, maybe even more, is that when you know what you're doing right, you can, or you, if you know how to be successful and why, you can transfer it to other people. Mm -hmm. You can inspire them because you know how it's done, right? If you're unconsciously competent, you can be like a great athlete, but a shitty dad or a shitty husband, for example, because you're trained well, programmed well for, for sports, but not for other things. And you don't know how to transfer one thing to the other. But if you're consciously competent, you can transfer it, not just to other areas of life, but you can also inspire other people because you know how it works. And you can actually, you know how it is. It's not just giving tips on how you did it, but you don't know, you really know. And then you have the certainty, you have the confidence. And yeah, in the end of the day, if we have the confidence, we're, we're following through. Right? If we don't have to, we're hesitating. We're not, exactly. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think so. We, we covered all of them? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so then, yeah. <laughs> but thank you for, for asking the questions. Welcome, the wonderful job. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Good job. Yeah, I appreciate it too. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, so that was this. This week's Training Tuesday. I think next week we'll have one more from Egypt. And then I'm also, she's flying home tomorrow. Back to Switzerland, back to work, and I'm flying back the, the week after, and we'll be back in Switzerland. I wish you a wonderful day or week. If you have if you have questions, then just drop it in, drop it uh, below. I will see the comments, and I'm happy to answer those. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on the notifications if you like this stuff, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Ciao. Do you want to say bye? Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>